Let's go! LSU picks up another commitment. Ori Williams, six foot eight offensive lineman. Look at him finish this poor defensive end and. Look at this coming on a down block on the four eye, baby. Mow him down, big seventy nine. You gotta love it. Six foot eight, over three hundred pounds, coming out of San Marcos, Texas. We're gonna give you not only some thoughts on him, but at the end, one of the more insane offensive line highlights you will ever freaking see. Okay, so obviously. The first thing is this guy has some real high upside. I know he's only a three-star prospect. Uh, There is one service ESPN that has him as a four-star, but look, the truth of the matter is, and we've done a lot of deep dives on this, offensive line high school recruiting is one of the more important positions to get done correctly, uh, as there are other positions that can be addressed more easily via the transfer portal. There's just oftentimes not a whole lot of offensive linemen that you find through the portal. And the truth is you need to build this unit in particular through high school recruiting. Now, pretty much every year there is um, an offensive lineman for LSU that was a transfer. Obviously, Miles Frazier is definitely one of those guys. But for the most part, you've got to get your trenches built through prep recruiting. Now, Obviously, there are some other players that I think LSU are going is going to go after, but this guy right here definitely fits the build as an offensive lineman you want to see commit to LSU. So now you're taking a look at some of his sophomore highlights, and as you can see, uh, just more domination, if you will. Um, you notice these aren't the absolute biggest offensive linemen. That's what you normally see with pretty much any uh, offensive line recruit. If we're being honest, because if you're six foot eight, there's just not a whole lot of those kinds of guys uh, that you're going up against in high school. Something else, and you'll see this on a lot of uh, high school offensive lines as well. So you notice he's an offensive tackle, but he's in a three point stance. LSU elects to have their tackles not in a three point stance, and you notice how tight these splits are. Uh, that's pretty normal uh, for high school offensive linemen. So obviously, uh, you know, when you watch him, you could see the potential there. You could see uh, some good footwork. But for the most part, the good thing is he doesn't have to play right away. And normally with three-star offensive alignment, you don't want them playing as true freshman anyway. I do see him as an offensive tackle. Um, and then also, obviously, LSU's offensive tackle depth is actually pretty good right now. You would think Will Campbell, Emory Jones, and Lance Hurd has that kind of locked up with a mix of Tyree Adams and a few others as well. Um, LSU's pretty stacked at offensive tackle to go along with Ethan Calloway, who is committed in this crop. I also think Kari Lee, another offensive lineman that is committed, is a very talented prospect as well. So, um, you know, with, with a player like this, you are able to see some growth over time without the pressure of having to play right away. I don't get that penalty right there, man. Let... Let the man finish his blocks. Come on. It's pretty simple. Huh? 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 So, um, pretty excited about this as LSU looks to build uh, their offensive line crop. And I would not be shocked if they added two more offensive linemen for the class of 2024. In the background, you're looking at Weston Davis, okay? This young man from Texas committed to Texas A&M uh, not too long ago. This was less than a month ago, actually. And truth be told, LSU felt like that they were in a really, really good position for Weston, who is just an amazing athlete. He's not the absolute biggest guy in the world, but he can move. And the truth is, LSU felt good, and then Texas A&M was able to win this uh, offensive line recruit. I don't think it's done. I, I still think LSU is very much in it. There was just so much positive LSU smoke for this to just be over with for the Tigers. So I'm just putting some positive vibes out there. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I don't know. But still a lot of time until signing day, and maybe we can get Weston on board. Obviously, uh, the recruiting rankings feel a lot different about uh, Weston Davis, you know, on three basically has him as a top 25 player nationally. Um, some of the services uh, don't even have him as a top 15 off the tackle. Uh, but overall, he, to me, is very interesting. Um, I want to share a few things about the state of Louisiana. Obviously, these last couple of years, it's been a very good offensive line state, and LSU has landed 
all the offensive linemen that were elite from the state of Louisiana, okay? Now, obviously, they missed out on Osiris Torrance, but he was such a lowly-rated three-star. Um, but obviously, more and more recent, you had Emory Jones and Will Campbell both commit. They were both obviously really good football players. And then you get Lancer, Tyree Adams in this last class as well with some other really good prospects from out of state mixed in there as well. So, look, you know, Louisiana has not always been the deepest state when it comes to offensive linemen. And when you obviously break it down, some of the best LSU offensive linemen have come from the state of Texas, you know, going all the way back to Ben Wilkerson, Siren Black, to, you know, more recently reliable guys like Ed Ingram, uh, Austin Deculus, and so on. So state of Texas has been really good for LSU when it comes to offensive line recruiting, including, you know, a guy like Kenyon Green, who LSU had on board, um, and he ended up flipping to Texas A&M, and that guy was really good, one of the better uh, SEC offensive linemen in recent memory. So, obviously, uh, it would be very nice if LSU was able to get Weston Davis back on board. Um, and, and you look at some of the schools like Georgia, they have quite a few offensive linemen recruited and committed to their school already. So, if we are to stay put, and you've heard Brian Kelly in recent interviews say, hey, we need to do better on the recruiting front and get more good recruiting classes in before we really consider ourselves uh, consistent national championship contenders with the Georgias and the Alabamas of the world. So obviously really bullish on this recruiting class, really excited about, you know, the future and flipping a guy like Weston Davis is definitely one of those things that, you know, big championship programs are able to. To do so, Ethan Calloway, Ori Williams, Kari Lee. How in the world does every service have Kari Lee as a three star? I don't get it. I think he is a top five player for me in the crop of 2024 at any position. So, uh, hot take for you here at the end of this video, huh? 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 So, before I show you the absolute most absurd. Offensive tackle highlight here from Ori. Uh, there's plenty of ways to support the PHO movement. Sometimes these film studies do get demonetized. So thank you guys so much for all your donations and support live streams. You guys know the deal, okay? Um, so first, we get Big 79, that Lloyd Cushenberry number right there. We get him right here. Nice little receiver stance um, to the far left, okay? Boom, I'm looking at you. Let's do a little trivia. Why not? What do you think happens here if you're watching this on a premiere uh click the answer that you think is going to happen or just answer this to yourself give it your best guess and here we go in three two one <laughs> huh? 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 the double pass from the big man i love the the sprinters finish right there from the receiver okay so there's so much I love about this play. First off, the receiver stance. Okay, so we get a low throw, all right? But look at the form right here to not only get it, but not panic. Obviously, well blocked. Everybody bit on this. No one saw the receiver leaking out. Look at this form, baby. Look at that. I mean... With the wrist tape and gloves on, that is a really good throw. Uh, all things considered, like obviously you don't want to overthrow the guy that's that wide open. That's actually a perfect throw if you ask me. So there you go. Lots of fun. I love it, Ori, if you're watching this. That's really good stuff. So uh, floating in your face right now, uh, we have some Ethan Calloway uh, content for you, and if you want to support the PHO movement, come to a live stream, all the good stuff, okay? It is Power Hour LSU Boom! In San Marco, Texas, I better see more Ori Williams highlights. I better see him running zone read, the triple option, more throws. Get the man the football, okay? And uh, tonight we're doing lemon pepper chicken wings, baby. Let's Go!